Take us back to the beginning. How did you discover your passion for storytelling and the arts? Yeah, um, I think it sort of started at a very young, young age. I'd say almost um, before I sort of even discovered it, my parents would tell me that um, as a child, I always had an intuition and a bit of a love for, you know, whether it be stuffed animals or, you know, little superhero action figures and stuff. I always liked making like, you know, they were always talking to each other. You know what I mean? Or I'd have these elaborate, you know, Batman versus Spider-Man versus a Transformer, little, you know, action figures kind of doing stuff. So as a child, I think I was always, I love the aspect of storytelling, whether it's, you know, watching movies or creating it myself. And then um, when I realized there was an outlet uh, when I was older to be able to portray, you know, drama in school and musical theater and all that kind of stuff, I, I fell into, in, into the love and been pursuing it ever since. You look at your career as a whole, who or what's had the biggest influence either personally or professionally? Um, yeah, I think um, that's a great question. Um, I think, I mean, as I'd like to think of my career, I think it's, it's almost like a stepping stone, sort of like an arc, you know what I mean? Like I was um, able to start uh, quite young in the industry and sort of learn what the industry was from, you know, doing commercials and, you know, a bit of background and just, you know, just you know, understanding what, you know, the environment was like, which led to, you know, guest stars, which led to, you know, you know, recurrings, which led to lead roles. So, I mean, I would like to think that um, it was a very nice and sort of gradual crescendo, sort of gaining a little bit of knowledge here, getting a little knowledge there, which was nice for me, not having been, you know, thrown in the deep end for something. I always tried to learn from my experiences prior to sort of bring that forward to be, well, as prepared as I could be, I guess. You've had a lot of success already in your young career. When you look back, is there a particular moment that stands out to you? Um, that, um, yeah, let me think. Um, I think there's been like a definitely a good few milestones. I would say, um, you know, I, I got to work internationally, which was really, which was a big milestone. Um, you know, getting to be a, a lead role on, on a show was a big, you know, a big milestone for me as well. So, you know, I think that it's a very, you know, it's a nice part of my career to be able to, you know, you pursue, whether it be a, a leading role, whether it be a location or a new genre that you get to tap into. I think I am sort of equally proud of, you know, finding those different milestones in my career and, and you know, looking forward to making a whole bunch more. Yeah, great answer. You know, you've got a, a new film coming out soon. Can you tell us about There's Someone Inside Your House, your character, and what attracted you to this project? Of course, yeah. So, um, yes, very excited. There's Someone Inside Your House dropping on Netflix. Uh, it is very intense, a kind of a cool departure. So it is a like a thriller horror movie, which is really cool. Uh, and it's about a, a group of seniors on their graduating year, and they are being targeted by a masked killer who is intent on not only claiming his victims, but exposing their you know, darkest secrets to their friends and family. So they have to be worried for their lives, but also if they have any sort of you know, secrets or things that they're trying to keep from other people, they are going to you know, try to expose that as they kill them. So um, yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be really fun. I'm very excited for it to be released. I think it's gonna look really cool. Um, and, and yeah, I think, you know, it, it's it's just was a very well written, concocted project, and you know, from you know just the script that I got originally, it was really cool to see a you know kind of like a whodunit slasher thriller that uh, was has kind of retro sort of aspects of sort of like a scream vibe almost, like with the we have very much like a slasher esque vibe, yeah. but also bringing in sort of like modern day elements. So I think it was a, a cool combination of both. Yeah, what should audiences know about Caleb? Uh, yeah, I'm, well, Caleb is uh, a little bit of an outcast um, at the beginning, but he is uh, very soon sort of brought into the, the sort of the main, the main bubble that you'll see that will move throughout the story. And um, yeah, he is, well, without spoiling anything, so I'm choosing my words carefully, uh, he is one of the, uh, the, the tight group that are being sort of caught up in this huge, um, very unfortunate spree of victims. So um, he's going to have to tread carefully with the others to try to hopefully get out of it alive. You were saying, you know, it's part slasher film, part coming of age story. What were those kind of films that you grew up on, uh, grew up watching? Yeah, um, I think I think there were a multitude of both. You know what I mean? Like there were, you know, 
whether it be, you know, when I first watched The Grudge, you know what I mean? When I was a kid trying to dabble into the horror or I mean, you know, coming of age in high school, high school stories are, are very popular stories to tell because they're, you know, commutatively very, you know, everyone understands that time in everyone's life. So, I mean, I've seen countless, you know, coming of age and I've been a part of them as well. And, you know, the horror stuff I also dabble in. So, um, you know, I can't say that there are any pinnacle ones, but I think that was something that I liked about this project is that as well as it sort of brought two things that I've, you know, admired and watched in my life to be able to, you know, put those hands together is kind of cool. You know, there's an innocence to, to Caleb that's very reminiscent of Holden from Beyond. Did you tap into uh, the character work you've done in the past to prepare for this role? Uh, yeah, well, and, and thank you. Um, so, I mean, there definitely are elements um, of sort of, you know, of, you know, research and stuff. And, you know, I only, unfortunately, only have one brain in this head of mine. So, you know, there are elements that I can take of, you know, if something worked, if something didn't. But now at the same time, I like to be able to sort of in, to take uh, some sort of individuality to my characters and be able to sort of find the nuances and sort of like different aspects to be able to um, you know, birth something new and, you know, makes it fun for me, makes it fun for the audience. So yes, I'd say I found perhaps inspiration in some of sort of, you know, Holden's sort of adolescent behaviors, but uh, I also tried to make uh, and create something new. And this is your, your first major venture into the kind of this slasher genre. Did anything surprise you about the experience? Is there uh, a scene that you're particularly excited for your fans to see? Yeah, uh, let me think. I mean, my first instinct is to say that, I mean, with it being, as you said, a slasher film, I mean, the actual slashing itself is uh, definitely a, a new element. And, uh, you know, there might have been, you know, violent or whatever it was. But when you're doing the film that we were doing in a slasher, I mean, there is no, no expense it could be too much on, you know, whether it be the blood or sort of the cool, you know, the gore, the stabbings and stuff like that as well. So I appreciated uh, seeing the behind the scenes action of what it, what it felt or looked like, you know what I mean? To be in a film that was able to give you sort of, well, not only the behind the scenes look at it, but when I've seen some of the, uh, the movie so far, it is going to turn out to be very cool. So I got, I, I liked being able to sort of be a part of, as you said, a different genre and a different something that I got to see all the blood and guts. It's kind of cool. A great chemistry that comes off the screen between you and the rest of the cast. How were you all able to build that bond? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, it, and that's great that it comes off like that because we were all friends. We were not only colleagues, but um, they were all a talented, talented group of people that, you know, I was honored to work beside. Um, I mean, not only is a movie fun, it's also a lot of hard work, a lot of long days. So being able to, you know, be in that atmosphere and environment with, you know, your colleagues, you start to chat, you start to make friends. And, you know, it turns out that everyone was not only talented, but also great people. So I say that would, the long hours and sort of wanting to hang out fostered a relationship that, you know, not only as I say, you know, going forward, I don't just refer to them as, you know, fellow actors or colleagues, they are, you know, genuinely my friends. Yeah, you know, speaking of those long days, there's so many intense moments within the film. How were you all able to kind of decompress after a day of shooting? It is, uh, it's a funny switch sometimes because you're totally right. You can spend, you know, hour, you know, long hours of being, you know, petrified, running yeah. away from, you know, killers or, you know, dark hallways and, you know, very grisly scenes. And then, you know, cut, let's have lunch, you know, is a, is a very uh, interesting sort of mental way to sort of detach yourself from that. Um, but I would also, you know, say, as I sort of mentioned before, when you have, you know, friends and, you know, the crew is really amazing and just having that very friendly atmosphere, it definitely helps you come back into reality and understand like, oh, hey, you know, so-and-so isn't really the killer or hey, so-and-so isn't really the victim. You can just all, you know, have a, have a laugh and try to make light of a situation that is, you know, outwardly kind of funny to be behind the scenes of and, you know, the best part is if a victim is stabbed, they're not really stabbed. So they're going to yeah. be fine. So we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're seeing another golden age for the horror genre as, you know, another medium to tell really cool stories. And there's someone inside Ooh. your house. It's the latest addition to that chain slash movement. Does that bring any pressure to this project? And what do you hope audiences take away after they see it? 
Yeah, um, I think that, and you're right, it is a very, uh, you know, it's, it's a medium now being being able to tell sort of uh, experiences, as you said, like a coming of age and being tell, you know, crafting characters, not only, you know, who's dying, but who is actually dying. Um, so yeah, so I think that that does put pressure on it because a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of industries have new horror content that are coming out. Um, but I think, you know, competitiveness only, you know, drives for a, you know, a stronger film, a stronger movie, and, you know, everyone's trying to do their best to get noticed. So I think with that inspiration in mind, everyone went in and, you know, really did their best. And, you know, from the, the script to the directing to the actors to, you know, the crew and the DOP, I think everyone really brought their A game. So I am happy for the competition because I think we really made a stellar project. And there's so many relevant themes within the film. Was there one in particular that hit home for you? Um, yeah, I would say, um, I think one of the, uh, you know, uh, major parts of the log line that I kind of, uh, I referenced before was not only is this, um, this mass killer, you know, taking victims and unfortunately lives, he's also exposing these, these secrets and these things that people are, you know, hiding from, you know, their family, from their friends and, and truly feel burdened with. Um, so I would say, you know, a small, <clears throat> I would say like underlying part of it would be, you know, it, it's, it's about embracing who you are and embracing your, you know, your, your, whether it be your thoughts, your insides or whoever makes you, you that, you know, you, there are, whether it be a trusted family member, a trusted friend, or just a trusted source, there are people to confide in. And if you're feeling alone, there's someone there for you. So I think, you know, amongst the, uh, you know, the fun and the gruesome, there is a, you know, there's a lovely sentiment that we're, we're telling as well. Yeah, and then final question for you. Besides this film, what's next for you? Where can your fans see you? Yeah, so I've got, uh, well, this is coming out on Netflix, and then um, we'll see. I mean, things are sort of opening up. The industry, unfortunately, took a bit of a blow with, um, you know, the unfortunate pandemic that, well, we find ourselves zooming in at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, I've got a little, I've got feelers out. I've got, a, you know, a few things, you know, here and there. But um, for right now, it's sort of a, uh, it's a bit of a blank sheet, and I'm excited to see sort of, uh, what uh what comes next so who knows where uh, the next year will bring me i'm excited